Hey guys, y'all understand how to paint metallic items, how to get chrome effects, metallic effects, things like that, the different properties that are required to do that. Well, that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to go through a quick video. I'm going to paint up a uh, chrome skull and I'll have a couple of different uh, examples for you guys. And yeah, let's roll into it. Let's... Okay, anytime you're going to work with anything, pretty much, you need to understand which direction your light source is coming from. So I'm going to have my light coming from the bottom and the left. And so I put a little bit of shading over to the right and going upwards, as you can see there. And so the same principles are going to apply when I come into those eye sockets. I am going to be darkest where the eye sockets come from the left to the right because shadows are always darkest where they are formed. No matter what, shadows are always darkest where they're formed. So the darkest portion of the shadow will be right inside the end opposite of the light, right inside wherever the edge rolls over. So I'm using just to using some just one color of paint. I'm just using some black reduced down and going to create all this. I know what I'm doing is creating the temporal lobes and keeping myself, uh, you know, just so I know where they're at. I use that little stencil there. And now again, same principle it is going to be darkest where the shadow is formed. So it rolls over into that temporal lobe. It's very, very dark and then it rolls down. Now when you start talking about reflected elements, um, metallics and things like that, it's a question of contrast. Um, the more hyped your contrast is, the more reflective the items are going to appear. And keep that in mind and I'll have another example for you guys here in a little bit. Um, so right above the brow, what I'm doing is coming in above the brow and darkening in above the brow and that is going to define my shape where the brow is sticking forward in this particular place. And then I'm going to put some random shadows in up above, you know, as if something was reflected in there. With, with chrome and metallics, or chrome in particular, the shadows are going to be formed really, really darkly. So I put in some random shadows in multiple places and leaving out some spots of reflections, like in the right-hand side that's going to appear, look like a window, has been you know reflected through the window now notice the crossbars inside that window they are warped and distorted based upon the shape of the skull shape so those as you move around things the object's shape influences how those shadows are distorted when you're working with something like this, you know, where you're working off a stencil and you don't have an actual reference of exactly what you're painting, it's important that you're going to be able to use your imagination a little bit and not necessarily just imagination, but understanding how your shape is formed. So once you understand how your shape is formed, you can understand where the shadows should come in. From there, you can add a little bit with your imagination on things that you want to see that are reflected. But anytime you have reflections, they're going to be distorted. There are four important things to remember with any metallic or reflective item. And you have four things. You have highlights, shadows, reflected elements, and reflected highlights. Important to always keep in mind where your light source is coming from. But you might have multiple light sources. Your reflected highlights are exactly that. Those are those very bright pinpoint pieces of light that will exist in there. And the shinier the object is, the brighter and more contrast those reflected highlights, pinpoint lights will be. Your reflected elements are exactly what they sound like. They are reflections of the things in your room or around you, the environment that's around you. Um, say if you were working on the bumper of the car, that might be the pavement, mountains in the distance, or the sky. And say you were inside a room, it might be reflections off the wall, people, reflections from the lights, reflections from the window. Um, those are all, you know, reflected elements and or environment. So again, pointing out below, right below that uh, cheekbone right there, where everything fades off into the background. Of course, that's going to be very, very dark. So I'm just cutting some random texture and shape in there, not necessarily getting too carried away with it and bringing that down. At the left-hand side, there's a divot in there 
um, you know, underneath the cheekbone as well. And so there's going to be some shadowing and light play inside that left-hand side. Um, so again, putting some random shapes in a downward motion, you know, as would exist little striations and various textures that exist in the skull shape. Of course, we've got to make them up. So I'm going to come in and lightly shade gray over the teeth and over the area above the teeth. Uh, you always have those little divots that run in from above the teeth. So in other words, it protrudes at the section above the teeth and in between where in between the teeth is, those always have those little bumps inside and that's what we're going to put in there. So the, those bumps are, you know, rounded. So we don't want to get too crisp with that. Your break over, so the tighter you make your line, the crisper that break is going to appear when you create that picture. So if it's a rounded shape, then, you know, that shadow will kind of blend out. As you can see, I'm kind of putting some gentlest shadows in there. When I get to the teeth on the bottom, I'm going to follow the same thing. The light is coming from the left, the right hand side is going to be your dark side. So I'll put in a little bit of gray to work with and then I will come in and darken up on the right hand side, very dark on the right hand side. Because the shadows are appear, they always appear very, very dark within metallic items or chrome items, I should say. And like I said, the more contrast you put in there, the more difference between your lightest light and your darkest dark, the more metallic it's going to appear along with crisper and sharper breaks. So I slowed this down to two thirds speed so you guys could really get a good look at what I was doing in here because I ran through this really pretty quickly. Um, these are actually I have two examples. I'll have another example for you of a more metallic, more stainless steel type metal versus this to give you show you the differences in the different metallics in a moment. So as I was saying, you kind of got to start using paying attention to how those shapes would be an understanding. You got to lose use a little bit of your imagination but just understanding where your protrusions are. And then remember that any shadow that gets cast into a metallic surface is going to follow and be distorted by the shape, which is exactly what I'm doing. So it's really not that much different than painting any other surface where how light plays across it, except that it exaggerates the shadows a little bit and it exaggerates the highlights quite a bit and the reflections will travel a little further along the surface. Now I'll come in here and start pulling out, uh, making my highlights as sharp as I can possibly make them. And once again, same principles, um, you know, where light would hit it and where I feel light would catch it and reflect off which of the spots right there right on the bridges and areas like that. I'm also going to take a little scratch pad, as you can see there, and I'm going to create just a little bit of surface defect in that, you know, as if there was some dust and scratches and stuff like that because metal would get, you know, scratched up over time. And once I do that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to come in and try to establish the darkest I can in my dark, dark locations. And that creates the greatest amount of contrast that I could possibly make on this particular surface, which will lead to a much better overall effect. Once again, we're always paying attention to the left to right, you know, shadowing so the shadowing always comes from the left and of course as we get deeper into those sockets and stuff things get darker but i am going to go pull a few highlights out from inside the sockets because if that was chrome plated you know of course the chrome plating wouldn't reach deep down inside those sockets um, but there'd be some pitting and stuff because you know chrome gets polished and so there would be some pitting inside there and just create some effects but you don't want that same complete and total brightness that you have on the outer edge because inside there it would not reflect that much outside of the surface.
All right, next I'm going to do an example where I do a more metallic effect, and I'm just going to do a really quick example. You guys can see the difference between hyped contrast and a little bit less contrast than metallic effects here. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap for today. If you got something out of this video, please give me a thumbs up and, you know, maybe leave me a comment down below. If you have any questions, always ask in the comments down below. And, yeah, that's going to wrap us up for today. I appreciate y'all coming by here. Once I'm Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. I hope y'all have a great day. We appreciate you stopping by here.